My neighbor asked me the other day, hey Rich, what's the best way to build a gaming PC on a budget? And I figured if he's asking, a lot of you are probably wondering the same thing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a budget gaming PC that can run modern titles without breaking the bank. We'll be using some of my favorite tools like PC Part Picker and Video Card Benchmark. I'll even walk you through a sample build that you could copy today. Just a little bit of research will help take the guesswork out of building a PC on a budget. The first stop on our budget build journey is Tom's Hardware. Every month they release an updated list of the best CPUs, best GPUs, hard drives, external drives, anything you can imagine. Uh, these lists are incredibly helpful because they cover the newest hardware as it comes out and they're sorted by use cases like best budget pick, best performance pick, best workstation option. If you don't want to spend hours researching every part, this is a quick way to see which CPUs and GPUs are worth buying right now without wasting money. Next up is Logical Increments, and this is one of my favorite tools for beginners because it lays everything out in a very clear way. At the top, you have parts recommendations, which is the page we're on now. There's also build guides for your specific application. If you want to build an emulation machine or a gaming machine or like a uh, video editing, VR gaming, you can go into each of these menus here and it will actually tell you, hey, the, these are what you should be looking for. This is the type of performance that you need because you know, a lot of times you can you can sacrifice some performance um, depending on your use case uh, for machines. Another option they have are specific game builds. So if you know, I am buying this game so that I can play Apex Legends. I absolutely love Apex Legends. Um, I've been playing on console. I want to switch over to PC. So uh, this, this will actually break down a couple of um, sort of basic machines to where you know, if, if it, the, on the low end of things, you know, you can get an Apex for 450 bucks. And then on the high end of things, if you really want that full 4K, you know, uh, super high FPS settings, you know, you're at 2900 bucks. So then you can sort of pick and choose and it, it breaks everything down for you. The parts recommendations uh, for the PC parts, this is kind of where, where I spend most of my time because it breaks down a sample system for you and it breaks it down by level so each tier you know going from um sort of low performance settings all the way up to the max performance settings and then it also sorts it by price with these um, sample parts that are here and most of the time when you look at at builds it gives you different options around the same price point so for instance um on this very good tier you know we have an we have an option for an intel card and we have an option for an nvidia card both around the same price point, so then you can decide which one you prefer. Videocardbenchmark.net has a really great section that's basically your best value video card. Now, this website has benchmarks on CPUs, hard drives, memory, and, and each one of these sections will show you a best value chart. I usually use this one um, specifically for video cards because I, I, I'm usually kind of set on which CPU I wanna get, but it's also a great place to get CPU benchmarks too. Kind of like I was expecting, the video cards that I had my eye on, the RX 9060 and the RTX 5060, are near the top of our list for budget build. So basically your, your performance per dollar, let's call it. All right, let's jump into PC Part Picker and actually build this system step by step. First up is the processor. There's a lot of filter options here on the left. I'm going to filter by AMD and I want the socket to be AM5. And then after that, I'm going to sort it by price. Each of these columns you can sort by. And the the processor I've had my eye on is this Ryzen 5 7600X. So we're gonna add that to our build. Next up is the motherboard. I'm filtering, let's see, we're gonna go into motherboard. I'm gonna filter by socket, which all of these should already be filtered by socket AM5 because that's the type of processor we have. I'm also gonna filter by manufacturer. 
uh, AS Rock, uh, Gigabyte, MSI, a lot of these manufacturers are great manufacturers. And this is probably um, to your choice, but I, I really like Gigabyte. And over here we can filter by price. And the one that I really like is this Gigabyte B650 Eagle AX. If you wanted built-in Wi-Fi, you could go with one of these options as well. In fact, let's do that. Let's go ahead and spend a little bit more here and we'll go ahead and get built-in Wi-Fi. Now for memory, I'm gonna look at 16 gig kits, which is two by eight, and 32 gig kits, which is two by 16. Also, I, I do have some manufacturers that I prefer here. I've got my eyes on some G-Skill memory. So let's, let's just stick with G-Skill for now. If we filter that by price, 6,000 is a really good sweet spot speed for most AMD processors. But I think this is the one we're gonna go with here. Moving on to the video card. The video card is definitely gonna be the most expensive individual component in your build. It's, it's where you wanna spend a little bit of money to make sure you get a good quality product. Logical Increments recommended the 5060. So I'm going to filter on RTX 5060 and just take a look at what prices. I think this MSI Shadow is the one that was recommended. So we're going to go with that. For the CPU cooler, I could go with an AIO. I really like AIOs and AIO stands for all in one. Basically it includes a radiator, a water pump, and it's all completely, it's a sealed off water circulation system uh, with a set of fans going across the radiator for cooling. AIOs work great, they're, they're outstanding. But recently we've had some really good movement in the just air, um, just air cooled technology. They, they, you know, Thermalite has, Thermal right has put in a lot of work into these um, uh, air coolers. And I think we can save some money here. You know, I think we can, I think this is a good place where we can save a little bit of money. I know that the, this build is not going to be super overclocked. It's not gonna be, you know, pushed to its limits. So I, I think this will be more than enough for what we're trying to do. In fact, the computer I'm using right now is actually cooled by one of these and I really like them. Next thing we'll look at is storage. So we want to go with a M.2. And we want PCI Express 4.0. PCI Express 5.0 is really nice. The speeds are tremendously better. They're also very expensive. And depending on the type of motherboard you have, PCI Express 5.0 can actually take away speeds from your video card. So you want to be aware of that. So for now, uh, like I said, knowing the use case of, of this machine, I think uh, PCI Express 4.0 is more than enough. Um, again, uh, I, I like to pay attention to my manufacturers. There are several good manufacturers, uh, Seagate, Samsung, Western Digital, all good manufacturers. My personal preference is Samsung. And then we can filter by price. At, at a minimum, we're gonna go one terabyte. It would be nice to go two terabyte, but I, I think for right now, just trying to save the money, we're gonna we're gonna stick with this one terabyte 990 Pro. This is actually a good price, and this will be more than enough storage space to to get them started. Moving on to the case, case is something that I will filter by brands. There's only certain brands that I trust. I want a good quality case that everything's specced out and engineered properly. I know everything's gonna fit. The, the brands that I really like are Leon Lee, Montec, and NZXT. They all make a really great case and I, I'd be comfortable with any of those. And then again, we're just gonna sort by price. And right here at the top, this Montec X5, uh, awesome case. I've used it before. It's clean, it comes with fans for your cooling, uh, so you don't have to source those separately and you cannot be under $60 price. This is this is just uh, this is kind of unbeatable. Finally, the last thing we're gonna add is the power supply. I saved the power supply for the, for last because this, this build right here, it actually keeps up with how much wattage that we need. Now, this says estimated wattage 379 watts. 
for me, I don't purchase a power supply under 650 watts. I think that uh, with today's modern computing, you're gonna see things get lower and lower, but I still like to have that extra just in case it's necessary. So when I go into power supply, I do set a couple filters here. The first thing I want, I want a minimum 80 plus gold. That's the efficiency rating of the power supply. Uh, bronze is fine, 80 plus is fine, but gold means that you're gonna get a really good efficiency. Uh, Cause remember, you're gonna be paying for this with your electric bill every month. So we will add titanium and platinum on top of that. However, I don't think that they're gonna fit our budget, but we'll see. Minimum wattage, I'm gonna take this up to 650. And then once again, brands, there are brands that I um, trust. Be Quiet is a really great brand. They've come on recently. MSI makes a good one. Corsair makes a good one. Thermal Taki is pretty good. Um, I, I wouldn't be against uh, grabbing one of those. NZXT has, is doing some neat things with the way they're having their power connections on their modular power supply. That's uh, They're really cool. But again, I think they're gonna be out of the price range. Um, Leon Lee is the same way. So just going with this, uh, power supply that I've used a lot of recently is this Be Quiet Pure Power. Uh, it has a massive, I think it's a 160 millimeter fan and it. it's fully modular, really great power supplies. Again, the machine that I'm using right now and have been using for quite a while, it has a Be Quiet power supply in it. And I've really grown to trust them. I like them a lot. This is 750 watts, so it's a little bit more wattage than we were even expecting. And so we're gonna add that up. So there you have it. This is a full budget build spec'd out in PC Part Picker. It's balanced, we know it's powerful, we know that all the parts and components are gonna work together, so there's no guesswork when it comes to that. We didn't quite meet our $800 budget, and there might be ways that we can go in here and slim out a bit to get us a little bit closer. But to be honest, I think, I think nowadays, if you want to build a budget gaming PC, Anytime you can get right around a thousand dollars, or you know, even better, under a thousand dollars, you're right in the ballpark. You're right where you want to be. Now, I will say this: one thing PC Part Picker is not very good at is they they don't really take into account bundle deals that you might find on Newegg or maybe even Micro Center. If I had a Micro Center near me, I would use Micro Center a lot. They put together some really great bundles um, for for basically enthusiasts and hobbyists that want to build their own systems. Uh, don't sleep on Micro Center. If you have one near you, now they will ship some things, but most of their deals are in store. That's that's where they have most of their great deals. So if you have a Micro Center near you, take advantage. Remember, just a little bit of research takes the guesswork out of building a PC on a budget. I'll drop links to all these tools in the description below so you can start building your own list. What's your budget for gaming PC build? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you go through PC Part Picker and you build yourself a PC, drop this link down there too. I'd love to check out some of your ideas. And if you found this helpful, make sure to like the video. Hit subscribe, check out my other videos, and thanks for watching.